Hello, and welcome to 2.2 .2, Newton's Laws of Motion. So we're going to talk about Newton's Laws. You learned about this in grade 11, so to start with, just a bit of recap. Newton had three laws. Three laws of motion. The first one was Newton's first law. And it says, basically, that an object doesn't change velocity which means that it doesn't accelerate unless there is a force acting on it. Acting on it. Another way of saying that is an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest. I like to say it this way though, it makes more sense to me just saying it stays the same velocity unless there's a force out on it. Now Newton's second law says that F equals MA. So that means that a force causes acceleration proportional to mass. F equals MA when we apply a force that object accelerates at a rate relative to its mass. So the larger the mass the less it accelerates. And finally Newton's third law says every action force, um, every action force has an equal and opposite reaction force. Another way that we can say that is that in a closed system, the net force is equal to zero. Okay, what I mean by in a closed system, um, if I had a box, a box like this, and I said nothing gets in, nothing gets out, then it means that if something inside here makes a force over this way, then somewhere inside there's another force going the other way, and looking on the outside, all the forces cancel out to zero. Okay? That's one way of looking at Newton's third law, that forces always cancel out. If you have any force, something else somewhere has cancelled it out. You can sort of look at it as the net force of the universe is zero. Or maybe that's not true. Once we start talking about the universe, we don't really have a lot of answers. Okay, but that's the idea of the three laws. So we're going to do a problem using Newton's laws, but now talking about it in two dimensions, which might be a bit new for you. This problem says that two tugboats are pulling at a 4.2 times 10 to the 3 kilogram barge into a harbor. The first tugboat exerts a constant force. I'm not going to read these forces. So the second tugboat exerts a different constant force. Calculate the acceleration of the barge and assume there is no friction on the barge. Okay, so just like our other two-dimensional problems, we're going to start by drawing our crosshairs. And now I can draw my forces. The first one was 1.8 times 10 to the 3 in this direction. East, 37 north. Okay, and my next one was 1.3 times 10 to the 3 east, 12 degrees south. So I'm going to say something like this. 12 degrees. And that was 1.3 times 10 to the 3. Okay. There's our picture. Now we want to get the, the net x force. And so I can just add my x components. So I'm going to have from the first one 1.8 times 10 to the 3 cosine 
37 degrees. And now in the same direction, 1.3 times 10 to the 3 cosine 12 degrees. And that's going to be a, give me 2709.14 newtons east. Okay, good start. We want to do the net y force. Same thing, 1.8 times 10 to the 3. Now using sine. And that one was up, the other one is down. This gives us an answer of 812.98 newtons north. Good. Okay, moving along. We have the net force. Well, we're going to draw our picture here. So we have 2709 east, 812 north. So if I draw that vector, that is going to be our net force. Here's our angle theta. So we can start calculating here. Net force is equal to the square root and that gives us 3028.45 newtons. That's our net force and theta, our angle, is the tan inverse of 812.98 over 2709 like this gives us an angle of 26.54 degrees so then we can say that the net force is equal to 3028.45 newtons east 26.54 degrees north. We're not quite done yet because we need to use, we need to find the acceleration. So F equals MA. A is equal to the net force over M we have our numbers here, 3028.45 divided by the mass, 4.2 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. And this gives us 0 0.72 meters per second squared. And we have our direction from above, east 27 degrees north. There's our final answer. Whew! Okay, and so that's how we're dealing with our force problems. We just do it the same way as we do any two-dimensional problem. When we want to get the net force, we just add them together. Okay, so we've got another problem here. It says, and this one's actually going to be a lot easier. It says that the person on rollerblades to the right is pushing on a refrigerator that sits on a cart on a level floor. Assume no force of friction exists on either the person or the refrigerator. The person has a mass of 60 kilograms, and the refrigerator has a mass of 1.2 times 10 to the 2. The force exerted by the person on the refrigerator is 1.8 times 10 to the 2 newtons forward. So we can see we have that here. And the force exerted by the... Oh, so we have that force. And now we want to calculate the, the fridge's acceleration and the person's acceleration. So let's start with the, uh, the statement here. F equals ma. And notice now I'm, I'm saying f equals ma, I'm saying it with the net force. That's really the more correct statement. So I can rearrange acceleration is equal to net force over m. Alright. Now I can do for the person, let's do for the fridge first. For the fridge, we're told that, uh, so we want to find the acceleration of the fridge is equal to this force 
times 10 to the 2 newtons forward divided by the fridge's mass, 120 kilograms. And this equals 1.5 meters per second squared forward. Good. There is our answer to that question. And now for the person. Well, first we need to find out the force. And remember that if the person is applying a force of 1.8 times 10 to the 2 on the fridge, the fridge has to be applying the same force back. Right? This is Newton's second law. So we can say that F reaction force is equal to F action force. So then we can say that the force acting on the person is equal to, um, well I should put a negative here. The reaction force is equal to the negative of the action force. Because it acts in the opposite direction. So the force on the person is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the 2 newtons backwards. Okay, so now I can find the acceleration of the person. I'm just using P for person. 1.8 times 10 to the 2 newtons backwards divided by that person's mass, which was 60 kilograms. And this gives me 3.0 meters per second squared backwards. There we go. That was using Newton's third law. And that's just about the end of the lesson here. At the bottom, I just wanted to clear up a couple ideas about weight, normal force, gravity, this sort of thing. So gravitational force, you probably remember, we can call it Fg. This is equal to mg. And now, see, I've called these all vectors. G is technically a vector acting downwards. So this idea of weight, if I say that I weigh 300 pounds, well, that's all good. Weight is the gravitational force. So I could say that I weigh 300 pounds. I could say that I weigh 1,000 newtons. Those are all measures of force. When I say 300 pounds, that's actually a measure of gravitational force. It is not, weight is not the same as mass. And to really clear up that distinction here, if I, let's say that I'm 100 kilograms, if I go to the moon, I'm still 100 kilograms. If I'm floating around in outer space, I'm still 100 kilograms. Whereas, on Earth, if I weigh 300 pounds, on the Moon, I will weigh less, because the Moon has less gravity. In space, I will weigh nothing, because I won't be experiencing any gravity. So weight is how much gravitational force I'm experiencing. I hope that's uh, clear. Okay, so that's a few ideas about, about weight. Now, the normal force is another thing that I just want to clear up a couple ideas about. The normal force, Fn, is perpendicular to a surface. You know, there's a couple things that the normal force is not. So that's these misconceptions here that I want to address. So the normal force is not always equal to gravity. And a simple example is, if I have an object on a hill, well, here's my object. The normal force is acting up this way. Gravity is acting up downwards. You can see they're even in different directions. And definitely, it's going to be sliding down. So the normal force is not just equal to gravity. Another example would be if I was holding a textbook against the wall. I'm pushing that textbook into the wall with some applied force. Well, the normal force is going to hold that textbook 
against the wall, and the normal force is equal in this case to the action force, and it has nothing to do with gravity. Gravity in this case would be countered by friction. But the normal force in that case has nothing to do with gravity. So normal force is just the force that a surface is applying onto an object. Okay, so that's one misconception there, and the normal force is not a reaction force. It's not a reaction force at all. It is not a reaction force of gravity. Okay? And what I mean by that is, here's me. I'm experiencing gravity from the Earth. And so I'm on the Earth. And some people would say, well, that's the action force, and then the reaction force is the Earth pushing back up on me with the normal force. No, that is not the case. The reaction force, if the Earth is pulling me with gravity, the reaction force is that I am pulling the Earth upwards with gravity. So it is actually coming towards me. That's the reaction force, and, and we deal with that when, when we start talking about universal gravitation. So we'll get more into that later. I'll talk a bit, a bit about that in class, but I just wanted to clear up a couple of those ideas. That's the end of the lesson, and I will see you in the next one.